Hello, thank you for joining me today. Oh, I have to say, I just need to take a breath. <sighs> there is so much going on behind the scenes at the moment, and that's what I wanted to talk about today in this episode is the storm before the calm. You know, we often talk about the calm before the storm. But I feel like there's definitely storm before the calm. So that's what I'm going to be talking about today. Um, and in terms of making art, in terms of life, in terms of things not making sense, um, because that's where I'm at right now. There's so much going on behind the scenes. I cannot tell you. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, we are working on doing our Make Art Your Living workshops, which we deliver every year. And we do them just once a year in September. I will pop the link so that you can sign up and take part in those. And we're also behind the scenes. I wrote a course four years ago. A lot of you here will know. Um, members of United Arts Base have been working through this course for the last four years, the seven keys to make art your living. And I am updating that. I'm going through it with a fine tooth comb and reordering it, rewriting it, re-recording it, thinking about all the stories from artists and how I can weave that in. And it's mind boggling. <laughs> it really, really is. And it just got me thinking um, this week about this feeling of the storm before the calm. Um, and I think for me, I've had a lot of these moments this year as I am facing really difficult projects. So the rewrite of the course, it's been really tricky, really, oh, like I'm trying to tread through treacle. It's making my head spin. And there's also a book that I am planning on writing that I've had the same kind of feelings, you know, just I have no idea which direction it's going in. There's two directions it can go in and it's just so messy. And in my head, it's messy. Um, and it's the same for art. I remember this year getting really, actually probably last year, getting really muddled with my art. Like, what direction is it going in? What does this mean? What What am I doing? And I wanted to bring this up because it's happening to a, it's happening a lot to me recently. And I think, well, if it's happening to me, then it's probably happening to some of you as well, <laughs> where there's stages of what we're facing. And this might be our own art. It might be the direction to take a job. You know, if you've lost your job, there's always that stage then of muddleness and confusion and like, what do I do now? And what do I want to do? Do I want to change? Or do I want to carry on doing what I'm doing? And should I learn something? Should I do a course? And there's always like that muddled stage. And I just think of that as like the storm. <laughs> um, and the same with making art, you know, there'll always be a time where you come back to that beginning stage of, oh, where am I going with this? What am I doing? I just, it just doesn't make sense. Like, I don't know what I like anymore. I don't know what direction I'm going in. I don't know what materials to choose. Or it could be a painting. Hi, <laughs> behind me, there's lots of things going on. And, and I've got to a place now where in my making, where I'm like, I don't know which direction to go in. There's lots of different ways I could take this. And yeah, I've been feeling that a lot recently. And, what I have also noticed about myself though, and I think this is the moral of the story here, is to have the faith that the calm is coming. You know, through every storm, the calm will arrive. And that's what gets me through these muddled, messy periods now in my life, is knowing that the answers are going to come. And so, Knowing that, it allows me to just take that space sometimes because I trust the process. And I have sat back now from my art and thought, if I just sit back, the answers will come. Um, the same with the book. I'm just taking that step back. It's a muddled mess. I'm overthinking it. 
I'm just going to sit back and just step back from it all. Now, when I was looking at the Seven Keys project and rewriting that, oh my gosh, I remember sitting down to that thinking, I have no idea where to start with this. It's such a big thing for me to get my head around and how I bring stories in and how I really think about the learning experience for people and I'm trying to write it and put myself in the shoes of someone taking the course and it was mind-boggling and there was a point where I literally just thought I can't do this <laughs> I don't want to do this you know it was that resistance and this is why I bring this up because I think sometimes if you're facing something that's really difficult you will feel this resistance and the messiness and it doesn't make sense and it's it can start to make you feel inadequate it can start to make you feel that you haven't got the skill to carry this out it can start to make you feel that you are useless I'm speaking from my own <laughs> words now it can make you feel like you just can't cope like this is just too much for me. I can't do this. And that's the danger then is that you can start to talk yourself out of doing things because of this messiness, because of the complexity and you don't have the answers. You know, if you can't grasp where you're going with something, the brain doesn't like that, does it? You know, it doesn't like it. It likes certainty and it likes to know that, OK, this is the direction that you're going in. These are the steps that you need to take. And in that stage of the storm before the calm, as I've started to say this week, in that stage of the uncertainty and you have no clue what you're doing and you don't know what direction it's going in and you don't know, you just don't have the answers. It's really, really tough to keep going, but it's imperative if it's something that you really want to do because you can cope, you can do it. And that's what I've been chanting to myself <laughs> over the last few weeks. I can do this. I can do it. The answers are coming and that calm is coming. And what I've started to notice now is that when I have that trust in myself that this is enormous, what I'm doing is massive and it feels hard and I don't know the answers. But when I break everything down, and this is my tip, when I break things, everything down into the next one to three steps, the storm and all the muddleness starts to calm down and I can start to see the next steps ahead of me. And what I have found is all those times where I felt like this is just too much for me, this is just not achievable, I don't know what I'm doing, I'm not good enough. And I've ended up pushing through and breaking it down that becomes this tipping point, this is what I've noticed, it becomes this tipping point of climbing up and it's so hard and I can't see the other end and it's so difficult, but there becomes this tipping point that when I start to break it down, I get to the top and I go, oh my gosh, I can see this coming together now. And it's like all the pieces start to come together and then it gets easier to complete. It could be a painting, it could be, a direction of what job I'm doing you know I, I was looking back throughout all of my life and this feeling of sometimes just wanting to just hide under a rock because it was all too much to deal with um, and then it's all come together and I've had it a lot recently where I've just not had answers to things and my brain does not like it it's got really intense because my brain is so desperate to find the answer that it's almost kind of the mental chatter as well why how 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 are you going to do this what's the answer where are you going what are you doing and when it gets too much like that that's the time to stop <laughs> to stop and just take that breath away from it and I'll never forget Maria Brophy giving this advice to my ex-husband when he lost his job and he was desperately trying to find the answer of what he should do next and kept looking for jobs and courses and he was actually filling his head with 
questions of, should I do this? Should I do that? Should I do this? And it was getting too much. And she was a guest inside our membership talking about mindset. And I remember Andrew asking the question, or I think I asked on his behalf. And I'll never forget her saying, you need to just stop. As hard as that is, because you feel that you're in this desperate situation of finding an answer, you need to stop. And he was like, oh my gosh. (laughs) And he did. He just stopped for a week and distracted himself with other things, reading and just breathing and taking that time out. And then the answers, it was unbelievable. Within a week, an opportunity came for a job and then it was all resolved. It was crazy. But I remember that advice and I use it often now in my own life, whether it's deciding what way to take an artwork, whether it's deciding what way to take the course that I'm teaching, whether it's deciding I've had to make some big decisions this year about the structure of United Art Space and what we're doing. And um, and all of that was a muddled mess as well. It was a muddled mess about how I would deliver everything and how we should put things and how the group should run. Big, massive, muddled mess in my head. Didn't make sense. And it scares you sometimes because you think... <gasps> oh my gosh, is this all going down the pan? Am I just destroying everything? But having that faith that this is the muddled mess, this is the storm, this is normal. I'm going to get to the answers. The answers are going to come. And having that faith has now just kept me going because now we're starting to figure out the structure of United Arts Space. It's all falling into place. The tough decisions that I've had to make This morning, I took some time out to just be really grateful. Like, I feel like I took some time through these muddledy, messy bits. And now everything's coming into place. It's like the jigsaw puzzles are all coming together. And I'm like, oh, thank you. (laughs) And don't get me wrong, I have made some mistakes in my decision making. But we're putting things right. So it's really interesting. And I just think this relates to art making as well. (laughs) because how many times have you sat there and you just don't know why you're making what you're making you don't know what direction to go and you don't know what image to choose next or what material to pick up next and it's just a big massive muddled mess in your head and then I don't know taking a step back just work on those next three steps and eventually you start to get in your stride again and that's where like for me the storm before the calm it's that intense chatter going, where are you going? What are you doing? Come on, come on, come up with the answers. And then that calm is when everything just starts to fall into place and you can see everything coming together and you know that direction when you've got the next steps and you know what the answers are. It starts to give you that faith that, oh my gosh, I know where I'm going now. So I wanted to raise this because just to share that that messiness is normal. And I don't want anyone to feel that that messiness is your inability to understand yourself or understand what you're doing or your lack of skill or your lack of anything. It's normal. And I share this because there's been so many times that in those moments, I start to doubt myself. I think about quitting something. I start to tell myself I'm not good enough. Why am I doing this? Why am I bothering? Look at me, I can't even work it out. I don't even know what my next step is. So I'm sharing this now because if you're not experiencing it now, you will at some point when you push yourself out of your comfort zone and you tackle something new for the first time. And if you are experiencing it now, know that it's normal. It's normal to feel this muddled mess and the frustration and you don't know what you're doing and it's no reflection on you, you can do it. You just need to just step back, figure out the next one to three steps and keep moving forwards. You can do it. You are capable. You can cope. So I hope that helps anyone out there listening today. And also what I would say off the back of that as well, this feeling of this resistance and messiness and this storm um, is growing, they're growing pains. And when you are feeling awkward and like about something, 
it's because you're growing, you're learning, and that's exciting. It's supposed to be painful when you are growing out of your comfort zone. Um, so those feelings are normal, as, as comfortable as they are. Have faith in them. Know that they are taking you somewhere, and the calm is coming. You won't be in this muddled mess forever. It will get to the calm, and then you'll be like, ha. Ah. <laughs> So that's how I've been feeling. I feel like I've got a lot of pent up <laughs> storminess that I need to release over the last few weeks. Um, but yeah, that's helped me get through my messiness over the last few weeks. And I'm now, everything's falling into place. There's still a lot of messiness that I'm dealing with behind the scenes. But I have faith that soon everything's going to be really, really off my shoulders and uh, and it feels good so thank you so much for joining me today i would love to know if this affects you or whether it's just my adhd brain because i have dyslexia and adhd and sometimes i just think is it the way my brain works as well but i'm pretty sure having worked with so many artists over the years that you totally get what i'm talking about so anyway back to just before i go um i want to talk about the make art your living workshops so they start on the 16th of September and we have been running these for five years now and this particular one we get lots of people asking you know I make this kind of art I make that kind of art will it help fiber art and digital it helps all kind of artists we have chocolate artists digital artists fabric artists ceramicists glass uh, sculpture all sorts people making art out of um found objects so it really doesn't matter what type of art you make now i've had a lot of people ask if it's applicable to photography i don't specialize in photography but it's a it's an art form so it will help you yes so it's applicable to everyone because it's all about you finding your own voice and finding your own people and that's what the workshops are helping you with so i can't wait to get started they run for the two weeks and I deliver them live, but they're recorded so that you can watch them in your own time. You don't have to be there live. Um, you know, it's impossible for us to choose a time that suits everybody, even if it was just for UK people. Um, there are people at work and people with commitments, so it's impossible. But we have a global audience. You know, we have people taking part from Australia, New Zealand, India, USA, Canada, most of Europe. South Africa. So yeah, it's impossible to pick a time. So that's why we make sure that we have them available on a replay until the 30th of September. So that gives you time to watch them and digest them and you will get lots and lots of support and help as well. So I'm really excited. I love doing these workshops. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Okay, before I head though, I want to check all the lovely comments and see see you all how are you on this monday lovely to see you all here i love this let's just get the weather update it's a bright and sunny <laughs> thank you colin um two directions two books i know but which one to start with that's the <laughs> that's the problem but yeah i know what you're saying it is hello everybody Catherine's making a stencil. Wow, lovely. It's warm and grey where David is. <laughs> Joe's getting ready for an exhibition. Brilliant. Oh, helicopter going outside. Can you hear that? <laughs> Lottie says, I'm totally paying attention. I just have to keep glancing up every few seconds to check on the spider that's poised directly above my head on the ceiling. Ooh, I found a big, massive one in the bath yesterday and we were having a <clears throat> big conversation. <laughs> Screaming, please just go down the plug hole. <laughs> Cornflakes. <laughs> This is a bit of an inside joke with our members because my son knocked on the door one day whilst I was live with my members to say that they'd had an accident with the cornflakes and, uh, and now we've got this running joke of not the cornflakes and one of my members has even designed a t-shirt saying not the cornflakes on it. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> 
spider's fear smell. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Lashley said, and for no logical reason, I just looked up. I'm going to check my ceiling now. No spiders, though. <laughs> Oh, it's really hot. I don't even know what the weather's like here. I've not stepped out yet. Okay, so Sandra, hey Sandra, it's hard to recognise when you've lost your direction if you haven't done enough to have established a direction in the first place. It's so true, isn't it? And yeah, I think you're right. It's hard. Sometimes you're in that stage and you just, like I said, if the brain just doesn't know what's happening, it will try and just move away. Like, no, we're not doing this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> this is too uncertain for me. No, we're not doing it. <laughs> oh, cracking me up. Yeah, this is it, Colin. You've nailed it. The creative process. <laughs> it is, isn't it? And it's the same. I've just been realising recently, it's the same for everything. Well, nearly everything. I'm, you know, I'm just thinking lots and lots of <laughs> stay strong, Lottie. <laughs> you may be considering joining the hub. Yeah, invite invite the spider along. <laughs> Maybe put some paint, like let him let him or her. <laughs> I'm not going to be sexist here. Uh, run through some paint. <laughs> I don't. That's just ridiculous. I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, yeah, love this. Direction is forwards. Worry about um, the cardinal points once you're moving. Yeah, it's important to keep moving, isn't it? That's a really valid point because, yeah, I say that. Keep moving. So I always focus on like the next one. You don't even need three, but I always focus on the next one to three steps. But then on the flip side of that as well, sometimes to keep moving, we just need to just stop. But I think the point of stopping is when you're filling your head with questions. It's That's the point. I know my point now of stopping and pausing is when I keep going. Like It's like my head turns into a spinning top and I keep asking the questions like, what are you doing with this? Where is it going? You know, and, and it's getting too much. It's like you fill your head with the questions. So the answers, there's no space. That's how I imagine it now is the chatter, chatter, chatter. And if you keep asking, there's literally no room for answers to surface in your brain, in my brain. Um, it's like a stalled car pushing it down a hill. And once it's moving, you can turn around and go back up the hill. I love that. Yeah, yeah. And what you just said, from what I've just been saying, let go and the answers will come. That's how I like to paint too. When I'm working intuitively, sometimes it's easier said than done being human. Yes. But yeah, that's a great point as well with the painting, isn't it? If you keep asking and, oh, I, I this is with drawing realistically. We had Nish do a great demo last week in our makers area. And, um, and it reminded me of, you know, when you're trying to draw something realistically, I would sometimes get to the point of just overthinking and asking, like, why is this eye not working and, and measuring? And, you know, when you're just oh, in that stage of overanalyzing where everything sits with each other and you fill your head and that's the time then to stop <laughs> and come back to the eye and then you see it differently. Yeah. Oh, Jackie's here. Hello, Jackie. At last I catch you live instead of on a replay. It's so lovely that you're here live with us. Amazing. Hope you're well. And I'm seeing Sharon tomorrow. So I'm hoping next Monday I'm going to be live from Sharon's pottery. I'm going to ask her if I can do a live from there so I can give you a nosy behind the scenes of what she's working on because it's really, really incredible. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm going to start doing little videos of me behind the scenes because you will actually see that everything is just a big chaos, <laughs> chaotic mess. <laughs> I'm going to do some funny videos today. Oh, I'm so glad I need this today. Are you in a muddled mess? Beth, yes, I'm stressing right now, but try not to. Yeah, juggling balls that seem too big. Yeah, too many of them. <laughs> Um, like I was saying the other week, it's okay to drop some of the balls and just keep the ones in your hand that you can't work on. 
<laughs> oh gosh. Um, yes, definitely looking forward to the calm. I've literally had to do some meditation this morning because my head was just going crazy because of the same, too many balls, it's just too many balls. And um, yeah, it was getting too much. So this morning I just kind of literally did some breathing and just, oh my God, this is going to be okay. And there was, I read in the news about, I don't know if, unless you're in the UK, but Sarah Harding from Girls Aloud, who sadly passed away, uh, it struck a chord with me yesterday. Just always those stories just help me put things into perspective, thinking, you know, whatever is going on right now, it really does not matter. It's not worth getting so stressed out about things. Um, yeah. Really sad to hear that news. Mm. Yep. Uh. <laughs> Balls do cause a lot of trouble. <laughs> oh, let them drop, Beth. Let them drop. You can't hold them all. <laughs> Do you set yourself a time each day to paint? Not anymore. Um, uh, Friday is my painting day. Because running United Art Space, I, what I find now is, it, I mean, United Art Space is my baby. And I find now that I'm creative in other ways, like creating the lessons and the graphics. And it's like my creativity has changed now. But I still like to paint, but it's more now for therapy for me. But still processing, I, you know, I, I like to paint because for me it's processing how I'm feeling and my why and my purpose and what. You know, get, for me getting through my separation was art. That's how I could understand it all and how I was feeling. It was just that. So, um, so Friday is my art day, but I really struggle to jump from everything that's going on in United Art Space to just then focusing on my own art. It's really, really difficult. Um, but Fridays is my day. Fridays is my my day. And maybe in the future it will extend more than that. But right now I've got some really big projects that I'm working on for United Art Space and that takes my bulk of my time. Um, I want to get the seven keys nailed and rewritten the hub is our members area that helps people make art a living and it's a subscription site so people pay over a, over a period of time and that gives them support and we are improving that and migrating onto a new system and making it amazing so all these things I want to do and write in my book as well so once I tick those off the list maybe that was a long-winded answer sorry <laughs> I love this, Jason. A calm sea never made a great sailor. Isn't that right? Battle through the storms and find your greatness. Thank you for the inspiration. I love that. Thank you, Jason, for that. Um, that quote is lovely. Um, but I, back to your question about setting time each day to paint. I think it's very important to do that. And even if it's just drawing in your sketchbook, making that habit. Well, hopefully, David, you'll be able to say hi to Sharon next Monday. Oh, Nish, I'm behind on my emails, but I saw it pop in. It did arrive. I need to sit there. And it's my admin day today to go through everything. Oh, no. So don't do that then. <laughs> I don't want to be um, blamed for awful things happening to spiders. <laughs> we found out stuck in paint at home once my partner sat patiently. Gently prizing his little feet from the paint. <laughs> um, oh, Kath, thank you. Uh, Trisha, yeah, I get analysis per, per hour. I can't say that word. Per hour. Ah, <laughs> I've got the irony. <laughs> analysis per hour. I can't say it now. You know what's on the screen. My brain has literally stopped. Can't say that word. Per hour. Per hour. <laughs> <laughs> forget it Michelle move on <laughs> I then have to psych myself up just to take one step one foot in front of the other and then things start to move and become clear yes 
Yeah, yeah, I needed to take care of myself definitely this morning. Um, okay, I'm just checking the comments to make sure. Oh, I'm so excited that you're all excited for the um, workshops. Lucy, Michelle, did you know from a young age that you had ADHD? No, I didn't. I found out in my mid 20s. But in hindsight now, when I look back, I my panic attacks started when I was about 10, 11. And I used to have really bad panic attacks and I used to cry about going to school. I hated it. And I used to get really, you know, anxious, hot. And now I look back and I think it was the ADHD because I was so scared in class where I'd, I would stop, you know, when the teacher would go, so blah, 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 blah. So tell me, what do you think about that subject? And I'd be like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I have no clue what you just said. And it happened a few times where they pinpoint people or reading in class as well. I petrified of reading out loud. All these things that they used to make me and others do at school brought on massive anxiety for me. And so the clues were there, but it was never identified. And then and then I just started missing school when I got into secondary school. I started to just miss it. I hated school so much. Um, and then I was riddled with pan panic attacks, anxiety for most of my 20s. And then I was kind of mid-20s in a really bad place, like really bad um, depression. I could, you know, I was on so many different types of meds and... Um, and also just feeling all this anxiety around why I can't add up, why I can't take away, why it takes me so long to do these things. And I started to just feel like I was broken. Um, and I was just desperately searching for answers. And then I came across this dyslexia checklist and it was the dyslexia dis diagnosis that came first. And then when I got help with a dyslexia coach at work, he was the one that said, I think there's more, you have ADHD, but I can't say that, you need to go and get assessed. So that's when that all came about. So, but then it was just such big revelations once it was all diagnosed. It's it's totally changed now. I had to go to London and wait two years to be diagnosed and all these things, but I think it's much more acknowledged now and much better help. So, yeah, I don't know what country you're in, Lucy, but... Um, here in the UK, I think there's lots more ways now of getting diagnosed locally. Um, yeah, horrible, and yeah, oh, oh, you get me, you get me crying. My eldest does not want to go to school. He's very anxious. We both really struggle with maths. Oh, yeah. So you're in Scotland. Yeah, I'm not sure in Scotland. Um, I would imagine, though, um, that there'd be much more help like here. Um, it's really heartbreaking. And it just, it's so shocking how some schools just do this to kids. And not all kids are the same, are they? And, it, and and if you are processing, I know we're totally digressing here now, but my niece, she's only seven. And my sister said, she's really struggling with processing maths as well. I have dyscalculia and I can't even, if you, if you say to me now, like, what is 10 minus seven? I literally have to count my fingers, seven, eight, nine, ten. I just, I don't, I can't do my number bonds. <laughs> um and now I know and I accept it, but years ago it brought massive anxiety. I, I was too ashamed to admit that. I was totally riddled with fear and just thinking, why can't I do that? Like children can do that. Why can't I? I was scared of reading children's books because I can't read words and oh massively anxious. And and sadly, school, not all schools, but some schools start that anxiety and going back to my niece she's seven and they put her on the spot and said what is th there was a multiplication or something like that they said Chloe what is this sum and she just froze and said I don't know and the teacher put her into detention and kept her in on a break time this only happened last week put her in detention 
kept him in a break time, said, you should know the answer to that, Chloe. I'm very disappointed. You must stay in a break and stopped her from playing with all of her friends. <gasps> so, so now she's starting to develop anxiety around not knowing her maths and it's heartbreaking. So, um, yeah, yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah, the system now for getting diagnosed, but here in the UK, I think, because I, I, I have a feeling that my son might have it too, because he's just listing all the same things that I did when I was his age or a bit older anyway. Um, so yeah, it, there does need to be more awareness about how people process things differently because even as adults we all process numbers and text differently don't we and I think it's all about accepting who we are and now I'm able to laugh it off and I and I can talk about it and say it out loud and and I think that's what we need to encourage children to do as well is to accept that part of themselves and they might they might be more struggle in areas and that is okay and we can make light of it rather than them starting to punish themselves for not. This is a completely different topic. Topic, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, but it does go back to us, though, doesn't it? And how we all need to just accept ourselves and our flaws and our strengths and everything. It just makes us who we are. It goes back to all the balls. You know, we can't be good at everything either. You can't hold all the balls, and you can't be good at everything. Um. Yeah, so Joanna here, yeah, I'm a teacher. I get angry at teachers that break down learners. And yeah, this is why I say this tentatively, because there are some great schools and great teachers out there. Um, you know, my kids are at a really good school and the teachers would never do that. So, you know, it, we can't, you know, pigeonhole everyone because there are some really great teachers out there and the, that do it well. So it's just terrifying, isn't it, as a parent? Um, yeah, lots of comments here. No, it's okay. We tend to go off on tangents <laughs> around here. <laughs> um, so, yeah, anyone, and, and just off the back of it, if you think, because I, I speak about ADHD and dyslexia a lot, and I get a lot of people message me saying what I describe has made them think that they have it too. And it touches my heart because I, I think there must be in the hundreds now of people that have reached out to me to say what you've shared has made me realise I've got it and my children have it too. I can't tell you the amount of people that have told me that and they've got gone on to get help and diagnosis. So I do talk about it a lot because I know it's having this ripple effect as well of people thinking I need to do something about this. Um, but yeah, the first step, I guess, is the doctors. I don't know. But um yeah, if anyone has any advice, please let us know in the comments below because people might watch this on a replay and look back as well. So please feel free to share any advice if it's happened to you or if you live in a certain area and how you got help, it would be really useful to share that. So, okay, happy Monday, everyone. Let's just all take a breath and just be like, we are just happy to be alive today. <laughs> take a breath. We've got this. One to three steps. Just been really grateful for the week ahead and um whatever life whatever life throws at us we can cope so have a great week everybody and i will see you all next week hopefully in sharon's studio take care bye, -bye.